Okay, well, I'm trying out this new gimbal that I got today. Currently working on uh, uploading a video right now. So today, on my agenda, I'm going to be picking up our T66 back from Bobcat. It's been out there for about a whole month now with them uh, making some additions and corrections and changes to it, which needed to be done, and luckily it's our off-season, so it works out well for, uh, for us. So we're going to be working on that. I'm also going to do a little how-to or how and why I load my equipment the way I do because it's easier for me to show a video than make a whole slew of uh, teaching people I can just show a video and then answer questions after that. Okay, so right now I got our equipment trailers inside. Just show you a couple modifications we made to it this winter. I think it's going to help with uh, our long-term use on the thing. And something I've never seen before and, you know, whatever. We do landscaping, so we obviously haul trees. So we built these metal sideboards that it will permanently stay on the trailer all the time. And still allow us to use our stake pockets down here for uh, chaining down equipment. Also built this uh, tree, I guess we'll call it a tree rack. So what you do is you put your, your root ball up here. Can't, I don't know, this, this thing's a little weird. I'm using this gimbal, but it won't let me spin the thing to face down. Oh, I guess I could do that. Okay, well that's a little weird. Still trying this gimbal out, so don't give me a bunch of shit. Put the root ball here, and then the tree will lean back up onto this bar. So it's got something to secure to. So that's number two. Number three, which I've never seen before, and maybe somebody will pick up on this after. We put, and I don't know how well you can see that. That's a rubber cutting edge off a snow plow, an old uh, Protec plow. We bolted those on to our stops on our ramp so when we put the ramp down on the ground the ramp will be uh on rubber rather than metal on blacktop so i think it's going to help with the trailer moving back and forth when you're loading and it's also going to do less damage to the the pavement which obviously we don't want we work on a lot of new pavement while this trailer is in here you got a, a brushed on paint job i just got all new brakes on all four wheels New drums, new magnets, new pads, new wiring, the whole backing plate, new bearings and seals. That should be good to go for uh, about three years. It's a lot of money up front, but um, in long term, in longevity, it seems to help without having to change a bunch of parts in the in the fall. Uh, we towed this trailer a lot with a dump truck. And the bed overhangs, maybe not this close, but the bed overhangs. When you turn, you used to hit this handle. So I made this handle removable by just unpinning it. And then you just throw it in a toolbox. Also changed the battery uh, for the breakaway cable. And yeah, this thing's ready to roll now. So we're going to take it out for a, a ride today and pick up that skid steer. Okay, so the first thing on this agenda is going to be taking this bed off. I just set this truck out to get uh, undercoated. And now it's back. I got the new bed on there, which I wanted to grab that quick before, uh, you know, I got used. So this is all, we use Crown. I don't know what everybody else uses, but that's my preferred uh, undercoat of choice, say, because I got a place five minutes here that does it. But it just seems to work pretty well for me. So.
I got one unhooked. I'm gonna go back and put the, uh, I'll call it the winter bed, but put the other bed back on it. It's twin, it's twin bed, but this one's already been exposed to salt. Whew, it's chilly out there. I don't even know if that's picking it up. It's 35 degrees. But the freaking wind is blowing so fast, it's freezing. All right, so we're taking off now. We're heading to Bobcat to get that machine. A couple other stops in the way. And, uh, yeah, we'll get into the, uh, the main part of this video. Look at the size of that thing. Okay, um, we're gonna start loading this machine up. I'll do a walk around real quick. But the first thing I always start with, parking brake on. Okay, every time, 100% parking brake on. Then, step two, hopefully they left them in here. Aha, okay. Wheel chocks. Every time. Some people say chalk the truck. I am against that. Chalk the trailer. And I'll insert a picture of why. When you when you chalk the trailer, when you put weight on the back, the trailer axles get smushed down. When you do that, the truck axle goes up. The truck could still slide away. So I always chalk the truck.
Okay, six minutes up on the trailer, chain down. Four points of contact. One, two, down on my pocket. Back up. Chain wrapped around. Handle. You see I got it right over the axle. Most of my weight's in the back right now. I don't have an attachment on either, so I'm trying to get a little bit of weight on the, the tongue of the truck. Another chain binder. Four points there. Ramps are back up and we're ready to go. So that's how I load it. Um, most skidsters I always load backwards. Attachment's gonna hang over the beaver tail a little bit. Uh, and that also leaves me some room up front here for an attachment. But I'm on the center of the axle. Center of the weight over the axle. Okay, I wanna talk just, I did a little talking on it earlier about why I backed the machines onto the trailer and not put them on forward. Okay, so in this case, a couple different reasons. A, I don't have an attachment. If I had a brush hog, stump grinder, something that's got some meat to it, I would tend to load that forward because the weight in the front of the machine means it's not going to roll over backwards. So we'll take a look at this skid steer the way it's sitting on the trailer and split it down the line down the middle. All right? Let's say it's 10,000 pounds. It's a 30-70 split, so it means 7,000 pounds with the rear, 3,000 pounds with the front. Well, if I try to drive that up forward, the weight on the back of the machine here is going to overcome as I'm going up the ramp, and I'll roll backwards, which we've seen before. I think I might have a photo of one, and I'll drop that here. Okay, so... If I load it backwards, it's a little bit more difficult to see where I'm going. This machine has a camera on it. But what I'm trying to do is I just find something on the center of the machine and I line it up with the jack handle. And that's how I know I'm coming on straight. The weight distribution has to be right. So right now I have more weight, half the weight or 70% of the weight is on this axle and forward, which I want some tongue weight, about 2,000 pounds of tongue weight, 15%, uh, which 15% of 2,000 is 1,500 pounds plus the tra trailer. Okay, whatever. You don't want to overload that because what, what will happen is you, if you overload the tongue and this back axle here doesn't have enough weight on it, it'll just sit there and bounce like crazy and you'll lose control. There's videos of that online too. The guy had it too far forward, the trailer was bouncing out of control. So that's the whole deal with the weight. Like I said, attachments on forward, bucket, forks, no attachment, on backwards every time. Because if I back up with the weight on the, the higher end, it's not going to roll backwards. Uh, in terms of wheel chalking, like I talked about, I don't chalk the truck. I always chalk the trailer. Because, and some people will argue, when I start to back or drive my machine up the ramp, the back end starts to lower, which means more weight down on this axle. The back end starts to lower, that means the front starts to come up. When that does, I've seen it sometimes where it picks the trailer or the truck axle up off the ground. If you wheel chalk wheels that are off the ground, that does nothing. Okay, I've actually been in the I've been on this this trailer with a skid steer with a, a lightweight attachment on the front, and I had a, just a pickup truck and it actually picked up completely. And another thing I'm going to tell you right now, don't load on the side of a hill. And I'll drop another photo of why. Uh, of actually, not why, but of the damage that occurred. When you load on the hill, if your rear axle picks up, your truck's rolling away. And that's what happened to this guy. Uh, I talked to some other people, the same thing have happened. The truck has rolled away. One of them rolled down a, down a hill and into a tree. This guy, his truck happened to just roll downhill and then drove off the road or drove off the driveway and ended up jackknifing, did some pretty significant damage to the bed. Always load on a flat surface. Uh, I showed you these ramps earlier. Maybe you can see them better now they're outside. With the rubber stops on there. That's cool because I can put this down on paper and not feel bad about damaging it because I'm putting it down on rubber. As for the chain, my chain setups are all the same. Four points, 
pulling the machine in all directions. Just hook into here. That one's just an easy hook. This one back here, I do with the uh, the loop and hook back to itself. Chain binder. Come on, camera. Hang on, this camera, this gimbal thing. I'm still trying to work that out. Just hooked into the pocket, pulled back, um, and then I had the extra chain wrapped around the handle here. And that's pretty much the same on all of them. So I got the chain down to the pocket. Sometimes if I have enough chain, I'll go in the pocket, down, and then back up and hook up to here. I've never found that to be more secure because I could either have one hook point, two hook point, three hook point on a chain, and then four hook point in the pocket. This is only three less things to fail in my opinion. All right, so I'm going to unload this now. I'm just going to drive it off, and then I'm going to get the excavator and show you that one because I do that one a little different than most people. Okay, let's talk about this uh, mini excavator real quick because it's different than this kid's deer, and I do it, I think, a really odd way, but I found very, very effective. Okay, so right now, we'll look at the house and the machine, the supper part. And you have your undercarriage down here. You know anything about excavators? Right now, it's actually backwards. Okay, the machine travels forward, and it's to the blade. I always drive my machines up and backwards. My excavators. Not because, like the last time, they're off the weight, but more of the when I come down. Um, one reason I started doing this was because my visibility. I don't know how well you can hear me because of the wind. Visibility to that track down there was really not that great. I was, you know, we have an open cab Komatsu and it was a lot easier to see each track. So I reached out to my dealer and said, what can I do? You know, what, how do you guys load the equipment? Because I can't figure this out. He said, spin it around, drive it up back, drive the tracks up backwards and drive it down forward. And I'm able to spin the whole house around and that's pretty pretty effective for me. So what I'll do is, is the way you see it, I'll drive it up like that, I'll set it wherever I want to on the on the, the bed, forward, backwards, you know, get my weight distribution all figured out, and I'll leave it backwards the whole time. So like the way you see it is the way it's going to be secured. Then when I go down to take it off, I'll lift my blade up, I'll spin my house around, and I'll use my feet to drive the machine down while I use my hands to use the joysticks and I use this whole boom as a support to keep myself from tipping over forward. It's easier for me to drive forward with my feet than to drive backwards with my feet and then use my hands to run the boom and the bucket and all that obviously. And then I just keep the bucket right off the ground a little bit or I'll set the bucket down hard in one spot and I'll just work my arm and keep everything in the same spot so the bucket's not getting rubbed across the pavement. All right, so I'll do that now. I'm not gonna show you how I chain it down. Um, I'll, you know, I'll tell you. I'm not gonna get chains out again, though. Just loop, loop the chain around there, pull, and binder, hook it to the pocket. Same thing up there. Sometimes I'll go through the blade. Another option is one big chain through this hook here down through that hook to the pocket, binder in between. And then on these excavators, you gotta put one on the on the arm. Because if you just do it the undercarriage, that means the whole house could still swing. And I've seen that before with a bad how or bad gear, planetary gear. And a house could swing wherever it wanted. So always one chain, right? I mean we're not hauling that much heavy, but uh, I just use a strap. Four short chains, four binders, secure the, the undercarriage, strap and chain, or chain over the, the bucket, and send it. Okay, uh, let me talk real quick about chain binders and straps and chains. Our securement stuff. Chain binder. There's two different kinds. This is a ratchet one. There's also a, a, they're called snap binders. We don't run any of them. They're they can be unsafe when not used properly. So this works for us. We just keep buying these a little more expensive. When you're using one of these, 
it's important that you start with these ears out as far as possible. That's going to get you the most pull. When you start ratcheting, what happens is the center spins and it'll suck in these eyelets on the end. And that's what pulls your chain. So you can see this one's almost all the way out, which is good. This one's about halfway out. Uh, I would traditionally start by get these things as loose as you can before you uh, try chain anything down. If, if they're halfway tight, or halfway tight, you're not going to get the full out of it that you want. You're going to end up bottoming the thing out too soon, and then you're going to take it back off and start all over again. You don't want that. That's annoying. So, start with them all the way out. I have my short chain here. It's about six foot. I don't know if you can see the whole thing. Let's just pretend this is my hook point here. And this is my hook point here. Let's see if you can even see all that in the picture. Okay, you can see this one right here and that one right there. When you put your binder on them, you want to make it tight. Pull the slack out of the chain, and you're basically going to tighten up the gap in between. Okay, can you see that? Let's see if we can see that now. Hook there, hook there. You don't want to hook it down here and you're going to have a bunch of slack up here. Because that means that's more than this thing's got to spin to get it tight. So pull your pull your end tight this way, hook. Let's say this is the stake pocket or the D hook. Get your binder as close to that as possible. And then let your chain run wild up here. Again, hooking close to the pot, to whatever you're securing to. And then you come on this side, pull this chain tight, and hook it as far as you can get it. That's going to make you not have to reset this binder eight freaking times because you, you didn't take the time to set it right the first time. Um, so the, pull the slack out, put the slack in the center. Okay, you want to make you want to increase the slack and get more pull out of each end. You're basically just putting something in the middle of it to pull things tight. Now let's talk about straps real quick. You know I don't have much on those. Other than a little trip, uh, trick to wrap up the extra. All right, this is a ratchet strap. It's, I don't know, it's two inches by something. Get a strap that's good for your payload or whatever you're trying to secure. I run, uh, oh, this one's 27 feet. I cut it down to 20. And the other ones I have 15 footers because that's traditionally just what I use. We're not chaining anything real tall, and the less slack, the better for me. So I always keep my stuff wound up real nice, keep everything well lubricated. So this is just an example. It's very tight. So, one trick I have for getting rid of this 8 feet of slack or 10 feet of slack, real quick. Start with a loop. You want it, that's probably about four inches wide, big enough for me to put my hands here. Okay, and I just roll it up. Roll it up. Okay. Trust my breathing. Roll it up until you got about two feet left. Three feet a little long. Here's eight feet of strap secured back to itself. And I can just put it underneath the handle or something. It's better than having to just tie something off over and over and over again. This, what this does is it just adds some weight to itself. So it bounces around and ties it. Then 
trying to get it on. So nobody else had to do this besides me. Around here at least. I always get people on that stuff. Just pull your loop you made back over. Pull the loop through. And you're done. This one's already stuck. This isn't good. When you're ready to go. Handle's got to be down, which might mean you need to pull this handle up to lock it. Then, for storage purposes, I just wrap it around. This just bundles it up real nice. It keeps my straps all separated, not tangled up. What I like. I put everything back in the box. Nice and clean. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight straps, four binders, four small chains, and two big chains. They're probably 16 footers. I got a cone, piece of wood we used to carry around to uh, set the ramps down on on blacktop. I got my two wheel chocks, and then I got this. Uh, we put a removable handle on here actually for this truck because when you would turn, the handle would hit the truck. So, a couple modifications bungees, we got an abundance of those, got to be 10 or 12 of them here. We carry those because uh, sometimes we carry a tarp on here, and when we have trees, we got to tarp the trees. So, uh, tarp we just carry around when we need it because there's no really good place to put it right now. So that's that. You got any suggestions, comments, thoughts, ideas, drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to read all of them. I like to respond to all my comments. Remember to hit the likes button, subscribe, hit on the notifications. That lets me know that you like the content that I'm putting out. And as always, have a good one.